All right, welcome everybody. I show we're at the top of the hour and we'll go ahead and get started. Welcome back to NetDevOps Live for today's session on Python or network testing using the Python powered toolkits of PyATS and Genie. Joining us today on our webinar are Siming Yang. He is our technical leader with the development team behind PyATS and Genie, and he's going to walk us through kind of some of the background and key elements of these powerful tools that you can take advantage of. And then we also have Simon Hart, who will be taking us through a wonderful demonstration of all of the elements and how you can get started testing your network and building those pieces as they go through. As always, during today's session, if you have any questions, please feel free to use the Q&A panel. We'll be monitoring that throughout the session. And then following the session today, I will have post all of the webinar resources, including the slides, links to other documentation and content, and all of the great code samples that Simon is running through in his demo. We'll get those posted under the webinar resources for today's episode. Without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to Simon to take us away. Thanks. All right. Thank you, Hank. And thank you, everyone, for attending today's session. Is your network working? Guess no more. So as Hank said, there's two of us. There is myself, Siming, um, the PyTS architect behind this whole development design of PyTS and Genie. And as well, the later half of this session, you will have Simon Hart, who is our technical solution architect. He's going to present to you how customers will be using PyTS and Genie, how you will be using PyTS and Genie out in the field. All right, so some pieces of agenda, what we're going to talk about today so first of all, a recap of season one, uh, session eight, I believe. What is PyTS Genie, where it came about, and what's the purpose of it, how it's used in the field. And second, we're going to de demystify and answer some of the common questions regarding PyTS Genie, and as well, how it compares to some of the common network automation tools out there. And obviously, network automation is not a new field, is not a new concept. So people have been using various tools. So as part of that, we'll sort of do a comparison of what's available, what's in PyTS and Genie, and how it stacks all together. Uh, with that, we'll go to out-of-box feature and models and platform support. We'll talk about um, how you can use PyTS and Genie today, installing it and using it immediately, what features we support, what parsers there is available, and after which, we'll hand it over to Simon, which is going to spend about 45 minutes going through various demos and showcasing to you how to use PyTS and Genie uh, in your network without even being a programmer, or if you are a great software programmer, how to do it straight from Python and integrate it with the rest of your tools. So a quick recap of what is PyTS and Genie. Um, it is the de facto engineering test infrastructure in Cisco since 2014. So our team's been developing this infrastructure uh, for a good five, six years now. Uh, chances are, if you are using any platform or releases that's been available in Cisco, uh, since then, it's been thoroughly tested with PyTS and Genie. Um, it is running CI CD in all of our platforms, if not, uh, sorry, most of our platform, if not all of them, uh, spanning most of the NOSs uh, including firewall, cable, and some of the other stuff. There is about 3,500 engineering developers right now in Cisco developing PyTS and Genie. So it's been widely used with, I think two years ago, about 5 million. So we lost count of that. It's much more than that now. And as well, more importantly, 2 million test runs per month. So it is well running in um, sanity and regression and various feature and solution test shops. This tool is in active development. So the same team that you've been, you know, if you've been reaching out to PyTS support email and so on and so forth, the same teams that developing the infra is also helping you out, right? So you're directly reaching developer to developer. Um, because we built this whole set of libraries that we find is great for driving your network devices, your various features and whatnot, uh, this whole thing was released to DevNet in 2017. So for the last two years, um, all of the libraries have been open source under Apache 2.0 license. You can uh, get to it immediately on github.com Cisco Test Automation. And um, you, know, you can take a look at what we've been doing with our devices. Um, again, a recap, the full coverage of this infra was Net DevOps Live uh, Season 1, Episode 8. Now, one of the questions we get asked a lot is, is this only for Cisco devices? And really the answer to that is no. The core of PyTS and Genie is platform feature and management protocol agnostic. Nowhere in the code do we say, if Cisco do this, 
other vendors do that, all right? Um, we built it as a generic network automation infrastructure. A lot of it writes on testing it, but when you think of testing, it really isn't just uh, do X, expect Y. Most of the library has to do with driving network devices, uh, configuring them, more importantly, getting operational state out, validating whether your dev devices are behaving as expected, so on and so forth. So these libraries can really be reused for all sorts of DevOps in your network. And, and suffice to say, when using, using them correctly, you can build a safety net around your network, which you know at the end of the day makes you sleep better at night. Um, all platform and device and feature supports are done via various plugins, extensions, and library implementations. Uh, we'll walk through that a little bit and showcase you how the libraries are built and how you can navigate through them and how you can add your own platform support. So what we call PyTS and Genie at the highest level is it's an automation ecosystem. It provides all the things necessary for network automation. What that means is there's a foundation for Py there's a foundation at the bottom level. So the question that we often, second often get asked a lot is what is the difference or what's the relationship between PyTS and Genie? So we call PyTS the foundation or the toolbox. It's all the boilerplate stuff, all the boring stuff that you don't want to code yourself. Uh, things to do with defining topology, how to run tests, what are the relationship between tests, how to connect to your network devices, so on and so forth. Where you'll be mostly involved with is Genie. So Genie is the next layer up above PyTS. When you're using Genie, you are effectively using PyTS because it built on top of it. It extends all of the functionalities. And where Genie really shines is its libraries. It comes out of the box with parsers, with models that models network operational states and configuration above the parsing layer. And as well, it comes with triggers and verification. So these are reusable test cases that you can use to build a safety net around your network. Um, on top of PyTS and Genie, you can integrate it with any sort of third party infrastructure. So whether you're a CI CD guy using Jenkins or GitLab pipeline, uh, or if you just want to do some command line in the shell doing some learning and some parsing, that's all available to you at your fingertips. Now on top of that, if you're an Ansible user, uh, there's a recent pull request, I believe it's marched in now, in Expo Galaxy for using just Genie parsers. So it goes to show that things like Ansible can also integrate with PyTS and Genie libraries. And finally, if you're a test framework guy that uses you know, robot framework or behave, we'll actually talk about that a little bit. Uh, we'll also show you how to integrate with those. So with that said, let's answer the question, why not such and such tool? We get this question quite often, right? I'm using this, why aren't you using this? I'm using that, why aren't you using that? So the, really, the, the, the real answer comes down to, do you have all of the pieces necessary? All right? So let's look at unit tests or pi tests and nodes. A lot of people use that for test, as a test framework, but keep in mind that that test framework is geared more towards unit testing, which means very small, quick tests with ind independent setup teardowns, and you want repeatable tests very fast, very quick, you're running hundreds of tests. Now, if you think of network automation or network testing, you're dealing with router switches and you're typically dealing with a very slow command line interface, or even if you're going through NetConf Yang, it's still you know, dependent on the speed of the box, right? When you're pushing down configuration, it takes a while for the protocols to converge. And that's why where unit tests and pi tests, they may not be 100% suitable for the job. Now, on top of that, beyond writing testing, you still need other stuff. So if you're using things like Ansible Chef or Puppet, well, they're great for provisioning, deployment, and management, but what they're not really good at is validating with whether things are still doing well after a while, right? After the initial provi provisioning, how do you make sure your network is still up? How do you sleep better at night? Um, there is robot framework and behave. So those are acceptance test driven development and behavior driven development test frameworks. Uh, they do not necessarily provide the libraries for network automation. And you know, if you look at the, what we call attack of the Mikos, NetMiko, Paramiko, or NC client, these are great at connecting to your devices. But again, to drive those connection libraries, you need a set of 
other pieces of network libraries that represents your features and protocols. Now, TextFSM is great. It's a great CLI scraping infra, but what about the actual parsers? Do you now have to build them yourself? So to answer those questions, really, here's an analogy. You're looking at specialized components versus an end-to-end -end solution. So in the analogy of, say, an F1 car, um, specialized components is from the previous slide that we're looking at, whereas the end-to-end -end solution is the concept of a, of a race car where you'd be taken on on a racetrack. So in the analogy for network automation, what you need is a whole system that does everything required for network automation as opposed to just the pieces and puzzles. In other words, what we call Pythias and Genie is, to some extent, the glue that takes all of the infra infrastructure, infrastructures and packages together into a full solution. So there's various components in Pythias and Genie that directly map to equivalent uh, open source packages, uh, but in the end, we use them to a greater, uh, e more efficient degree, and as well, we put it all together into a package solution. The top half is where the PyTS test framework comes in, and the bottom half is where all your libraries are, um, where parsers are available, where models are available, and these are really the things that you use directly to drive your boxes. So as opposed to thinking twice, oh, um, how do I send commands after I connect to my devices, or how do I properly verify uh, my OSPF is still up, you'll be using a library to do that instead. You basically, you let the infrastructure and the libraries to take care of things for you. Speaking of libraries, our libraries, like I said, is open source. So the core of PyTS and Genie is very lightweight and all the platform support comes in through implementations from the library layer. For example, if you're just looking for some parsers, today you can go to github.com, Cisco Test Automation, and just look at our Genie parsers. Um, the parsers today supports a variety of Cisco platforms and to some extent uh, other devices. So as an example, we have some parsers for Junos uh, simply because some of our customers wanted it and uh, we did a prototype proving that the infrastructure can be used for a variety of vendor dev devices. So Pythias and Genie doesn't require its own environment to run. It's all Python based, 100% Python, and it runs in Python 3.4 to 3.7. Now, as soon as, soon as Python 3.8 is released, we'll add support to that as well. Um, you can install it on any flavor of Linux. You can run it directly from your MacBook, your MacBook Pro on Mac OS. And as well, if you're a Windows user, you can install it in Windows subsystem, subsystem for Linux. Unfortunately, it doesn't run straight in Windows, but obviously with WSL, it makes everything easy. So basically any Linux-like environment with I would say probably anything above two gig of RAM and a couple hundred megabytes of hard drive will do, depending on how much log you generate at the end of the day. So to install PyTS, you're looking to create a Python virtual environment. So with Python 3, that is Python 3-M VM and create a folder where you want this virtual environment to be in. You activate it by sourcing the activate file. So these are standard commands you would do with the Python virtual environment. And all you have to do is install it. So pip install PyTS and Genie. Everything there is available on the Python pub public PyP. And when you do that, every, all the dependencies are pulled down and you have the PyTS shell command and Genie shell command avail available in your fingertips. There is no telemetry that gets sent back uh, to Cisco, we do not collect any usages, any stats whatsoever. You can turn off your internet connection and try the framework out. Um, everything is safe for you in your lab. So before we hand it over to Simon, uh, let's take a look at the actual website, walk through some of our features, and make sure you understand what our browser is all about. So going to my browser, I, hopefully everyone still sees this. You can go to cs.co slash pyats, and that brings you to the DevNet landing page for PyTS and Genie. So everything that you need about PyTS and Genie is available on this website. There's various videos about it, and also a quick introduction by Raymond Hettinger, a Python core developer, and as well the previous sessions of NetDevOps Live. What's important is if you navigate to the docs portion, there is a couple thousands of pages documentation on Python and Genie by now. So obviously we won't be covering all of that here, 
but feel free to go through these. Uh, it is available in Docker, on Docker Hub. Uh, there is hands-on learning and example solutions that may interest you. Now, what I want to specifically highlight before I hand this over to Simon is the PyTS features and models, the Genie portion. So Genie being the PyTS library format, there is a nice browser that we included uh, how to navigate through what's available in the system. So for example, if you're just looking for some parsers, go to this page, click parsers, and here is the list of all available parsers uh, in PyTS and Genie today. You can search for something straight here, or you can just throw, scroll through it and everything is divided by the actual platform they're, they're supported. So for example, if you're interested in say show IP multicast on iOS, click on this and it gives you here is the actual schema for it, which means if you run this parser on this particular platform, this is the output structure that is going to look, uh, what it's going to look like in Python from a dictionary format perspective. Let's go back. Let's say IP interface brief. Here is a slightly bigger structure. Now, if you're interested in how this is actually implemented, like I said, everything is open source, which means you can click this button, view source. That will take you to GitHub and that will actually take you to the implementation portion of where this library uh, is. Um, feel free to fork this, open up pull request, interact with us, and we'll help you out and how to understand this. So Cisco Test Automation Genie Parser. One step above and beyond that, there's the concept of models. So if you look at parser, a parser is very specific to a platform and a parser may be sort of limiting because between platforms, the output is different. Now, if you're familiar with netconf, if you're familiar with say, netconf yang, you know that something like say openconfig uh, is great at ha having a single structure and then working across different platforms, even between competitors. Now, where netconf yang models tends to be difficult is the fact that they're a machine-to-machine -machine interface. It's not necessarily for programmers or for network engineers, and you know, XML may be very difficult to build. So where Genie model comes in is they're what we call Yang inspired. So we have engineers that studies all of these models and how, how features behave differently across different platforms. And if we look at the if we look at the concept of just interface. We studied all interfaces across different platforms and we come up with this one top level holistic structure, which means on Cisco iOS XE, as an example, when we say learn everything there is about an interface, we issue all of these platform specific commands and we take all of their output and then build this one megadata structure that is everything Pythonic, everything about your interfaces, all right? Same with on XR here is the different set of commands on NXOS and obviously being Cisco, we are focusing on our day-to-day -day basis, the building support for Cisco devices, but for any other platform, it's the same concept. It's an adapting layer that, that takes different CLI outputs and build one model structure that is the same for different platforms, right? Now, if we look at this structure, it's painfully obvious as a network engineer or as a new new software developer how you can use this, this data structure. We provide the necessary library set for you to build your business logic on top um, so you can use make smart decisions. Now, with that said, Hank, let's uh, get the demo going. We're going to do the demo. There's going to be three pieces of the demo. So first of all, um, we realize a lot of network engineers are, aren't necessarily programmers. So um, the first step is to show how to use PyTest and Genie and how to statefully compare the state of your network and your devices using PyTest and Genie without programming. So second, we're going to do a little bit of programming with Robot Framework on English-like test cases. So what this means is uh, writing keywords and then driving your network devices using Robot Framework. And finally, if you're a hardcore, pro hardcore programmer, we're going to show you straight up in Python how to invoke all of the PyTest and Genie libraries and use it in your Net DevOps. So with that, with that. thanks for that, uh, Simming. Um, great introduction. So I'm just going to now go through 
through a demonstration, as Simming mentioned, of showing you how to uh, leverage Genie and PyATS from the CLI, from Robot Framework, and then we're going to do a bit of Python. So it's kind of a crawl, walk, run approach. And in order to do that, we need some kind of test topology. So this is the topology I'm going to use. Uh, I've got uh, three devices, uh, all virtual devices, a Nexus 9000V, a CSR1000V, and an XRV. So I'm demonstrating here there's three operating systems that I'm going to be interacting with. They're all connected together with single links uh, with slash 30s, and I'm running ISPF between each of the devices in area 0 and IBGP uh, over AS1. Now, one thing to note while I go through this demonstration is that I'm using something called mock devices. Now, there's a feature within uh, PyATS Genie where I can record a session against a device, and then I can replay that recording in order to test against it. So I'm not testing against the visual physical devices, I'm testing against a recorded device, which behaves exactly like a physical device. Now, the great thing about that is, is that I'm not actually being disruptive or anything on a network, and I'm not um, uh, at, the, uh, at the behest of the demo gods and links going down, and I can't actually get hold of uh, devices themselves. But by doing that, I do have to uh, initiate some commands that you probably wouldn't, well, you wouldn't do in a, in a production network. So, um, Simming showed you how to, or, or just mentioned how to install a PyATS and Python, but it's pretty simple. It's pip install genie. Now, if I do a pip install genie, do a return there, it's going to install genie, and it's also going to uh, install the core PyATS. And from there, uh, I can use uh, Genie CLI. I can import the libraries into um, into Python, uh, and I probably need an additional library, uh, Genie.libs.robot, to uh, install in order to use the robot framework. Before we can actually test against anything, the first thing we need is some kind of test bed file. So we need to tell Genie what our test environment looks like. And that's, create, that's done by creating a YAML file. And if you see on the left of my screen here, I have testbed.yaml. This is a fairly simple file, um, quite self-explanatory. But um, at the top, underneath testbed, I have some global parameters. Those global parameters include the name of the testbed, also uh, access to my routers and switches. Uh, now, clearly, if they were individual routers and switches had different uh, access credentials, then I will put them underneath devices, but all of these devices have the same credentials, so I put them in global. Then I describe the devices themselves. So I have three devices, XE, NXOS V1, and also XR. Uh, this naming here, this first item in my YAML here, needs to correspond with the host name of the device I'm connecting to. Then I can give it an alias for, for anything I wish to call it or refer to it within my script. So I'm keeping uh, this as it, XE here. I need to describe what the operating system is and also uh, the type of device. Then I describe how I'm going to connect the device. In this, I'm using a connection library called Unicon. This is built within uh, PyATS. So this is our uh, connection library of, uh, of preference. I'm Illustrating here where, uh, what, what IP address I'll be using, what protocol, uh, telnet, and what port number. Uh, you can ignore these custom extraction pieces here. We're not actually leveraging those. So that's my testbed file. You need a testbed file to do anything against a testbed. So we'll be referring back to this uh, quite frequently. One thing I need to do, though, is I need to uh, set up my shell in order to use my uh, recordings. Yeah. So, so I've got these two variables, Unicon Replay and Unicon Speed. Uh, and we normally, with speed, we go with 10 as a default. And this is just saying, right, refer to the, record, the initial recording I made of these three devices, and when we replay back, use a speed of 10. In production environments, if we were going to live devices, you would not need to export those variables into your uh, shell. 
So I've got Genie loaded and I want to see what Genie can do. So if I do Genie help, I will get uh, a response here that will show that I have uh, a number of different commands I can use. So I've got Genie diff, Genie learn, Genie pass, Genie run, uh, and Genie shell. Now, what we're going to look at first is Genie learn. Now, something mentioned earlier on about the models. So there's uh, numerous models that we can use to retrieve operational and state data from our devices. And in this instance, I'm going to say Genie learn OSPF. So I'm going to learn all the OSPF state and configuration data. I'm going to learn all my interface state and configuration and all my BGP. My testbed file is the testbed file that I've just shown you on the right hand of my screen. This YAML file. And lastly, I'm going to say, right, anything I learn, can you output it into a directory I'm going to call learnt. Now, what Genie CLI is doing, it's uh, connecting to each one of those devices individually, retrieving that data, and it's going to put it into several files into my learnt directory. If we can see here, it reports back. Uh, I've got my operational state structure in this particular file, which is xropps.txt for the XR. Uh, for XE, it's xeops. Um, sorry. All right. Yep. Sorry. For XE, it's at the top. This is for OSPF, um, for interface, and for BGP, and likewise for NXOSV, and also for XR. So if I cd into this learnt directory, we can have a look at what those files are. So if we open up, for instance, uh, interface iOS XE underscore XE ops text. And there we have it. This is everything I've retrieved regarding interfaces on my XE device. And as you can see, it's got both configuration and operational state. Similarly, I could have done that for OSPF. And there we have it. We have the structured data in that file for OSPF for the XE device. Now, <clears throat> there's also a console file in here. I'll just show you that very briefly. The console file is just kind of a, a log file showing you how uh, Genie has interacted with the device. So here we can see here, it's issued a show interface command. Um, and it's, if we go further down, it's issued uh, a show VRF detail. So uh, show interfaces accounting. So these are all the different show commands that we generate in order to build up the data to populate that model. So I come out of this file now. And I've got this directory learnt here. And what we can say is that is currently the stable state of my network. So it's work, my, I know my network's working, uh, there's nothing going wrong, and I've learnt about my OSPF, BGP, and my uh, interfaces. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the recording. So I did another recording of these three devices, and there's an error in that network. So in order to do that, I need just to change the recording. Uh, we're going to call that disaster. And now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to learn my network again. So I've got a state uh, of the network in my learnt directory. I've changed the state of the network. And now I'm going to interrogate that network and save it in a directory called output. Uh, a directory called disaster, I mean. So just take a, a 30 seconds or so to capture that. Okay. 
Now, I've now got this directory called disaster. If I look in there, I've got a similar uh, number of files. That is the output of the network in its current state. And if I go into interface, iOS XE, XE ops, I can look through there and I could try and find out what's different from the interfaces here from the interfaces when I initially learnt the, um, uh, the state of the network. That's going to take probably a month or some days to do. But if I go into Genie Help, I can see that there is a command called diff. So let's see what happens if I use the diff. So Genie diff. I've got my learnt directory and my disaster directory. So I want to have a look at the difference between the learnt directory and the disaster directory. And I'm going to input output any out, output from that into a directory called diff dir. So I apologies for that. I'll give you a hand here, Simon. You're in the wrong directory. Yeah, I'm in the wrong directory. I just realized. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Hank. Yeah. Ah. Learned. Yeah, I need to do learned. And I probably yeah, learned. There we go. There we go. So eventually I uh, got to do a diff between those two directories. And it's given me some indication here now about where the differences are. So I've got a difference, difference in my uh, operational state on interface, BGP, and OSPF. So let's have a look at one of those. Uh, diff and is the OSPF iOS XE ops text. Now, <clears throat> what it's showing us here is that anything with a minus is what was in the original uh, the, the original file. Anything with a plus is what's in the new file. So, what I can see here that my OSPF was running when I learnt the network, but in a disaster mode, then that neighbor doesn't exist. I can also see here under gigabit ethernet 2 that uh, originally that interface was enabled, uh, but now it's disabled. So let's go back and have a look at the interface for here. Ah, and here we can see, right, OK, yeah. The operational status is down. Uh, it was previously up, and the state of the interface is uh, false. So you know, once again, down. So now we know what the root cause of that problem is. Why we've lost our OSPF and BGP is because Gigabit Ethernet 2 is down. So I, that's it really is kind of demonstrating the ease by which um, you can take snapshots of your network from the CLI and compare the state in order to troubleshoot very powerful tool um, for, uh, uh, for for validating your network. Now, to a certain extent, there's not a great deal of automation going on there. I mean, there's a lot, there's a lot of grunt work going on in the background, but we can automate things uh, a little further and we can use Robot. Now, assuming I mentioned earlier on, the Robot is a, a generic Python uh, Java test framework that uses English-like keywords for testing. So we've got a number of uh, keywords, robot keywords within Genie that we can leverage in order to create um, create a automated uh, automated method for comparing state. So in order to do that, we need to create a robot file. And this robot file um, is one I created earlier. And what we have to do is we have to import the PyATS robot uh, library as well as the Genie robot library. We have to define what testbed we're using. In this case, we're using uh, testbed 
uh, .yaml. And what I'm saying is I'm, I want to connect to the NXISV device and also the XE device. So this is the keyword here, connect to device, connect to device. And then I'm saying profile the system for config, interface, platform, OSPF, ARP, routing, VRF, VLAN. So it's going to go and retrieve all the operational state for all those different models on the devices, OS v1 and xc and save it in a pickle file called good underscore snapshot before i do that i need to make sure that my um, my environment is in a good state to begin with so we'll go back to good state And we're going to go into a directory called robot initial snapshot. And if I look here, there's that robot file. So I need to run this robot file. So I'm going to run robot. And I'm going to say output directory. Anything that robot generates or the robot file generates, just pump it into that run directory. And I'm going to do robot initial snapshot. Now, something that robot does under the covers, it's got some reporting. So it allows us to actually collect some data and view that uh, within HTML. So I'm going to show you that once we've actually run this particular report. So there's kind of two test cases running here. One is connecting to the devices. The other test case is profiling the devices, so profiling those two devices. As we can see here, we've got an output uh, in the run directory. So let's have a look. We've got these three outputs, log.html, .xml, and report.html. The most interesting one here, and you, incidentally, the, these demonstrations are on GitHub. I'll share the resources later. You can run these yourself, uh, and you can look at some of the other outputs that's being generated at your leisure. But uh, let's open log.html. Uh, let's open it in the right directory. And here we go. So what it's showing here, two tests we had, both critical tests, they both passed. One was to connect to the devices. And we got some information here about how they connected. Um, and then also profile the devices. So we can see here we're asking to profile the system on devices as good snapshot. And we could explore here everything that was used in order to collate the data for populating that data model. That's all well and good. Uh, I knew that one was going to succeed. So I'm going to go back and do something so that we've got one that actually fails. So once again, I'm going to have a network that is not working properly. So CD, I'm going to go into robot compare snapshot. Now, if we look at the compare file, this robot file is pretty much the same as the previous um, the previous robot file, apart from this command here. And I'm using this robot keyword compare profile, and I made this a good snapshot. So we've got that good snapshot in this particular directory. And I want to compare it with the new snapshot. And I want to compare these devices, OSV1 and XE. Once again, I'm going to uh, put any output in a directory called run, call it whatever you will, but, uh, and I'm running the compare snapshot. 
Uh, oh, sorry. Robot output dir run robot compare. Give it about 30 seconds. And we got a failure. I was expecting a failure. And the reason we can see a failure is pretty much what we did with the CLI is that our OSPF is down, our BGP is probably down. There's probably a lot of other stuff here. We can see this message is, is truncated, but we can have a look and see, well, okay, what's the difference between the, the two states of the network? Once again, we got this uh, output in the run directory. So if I open run, log.html. Aha. So we can see here that we have three critical tests this time. So the third test was compare and the compare has failed. And if I look here, then I can see where things have failed. So for instance, on OSPF, I can see that my OSPF neighbor has gone down. If I look at my ARP, I can see that I've lost quite a number of ARPs. If I look at routing, I can see that a number of routes have uh, left the routing table. So here this is really powerful to actually determine the difference between your current network state and your stable network state. So really validating the network and providing you a, a whole plethora of uh, information. Now, with robots, uh, you may be wondering, right, well, how do I determine what, um, uh, what the commands are, what the information is to use the robot framework? Well, you could go to the robot framework website, but it's not really going to help you that much. But um, if we go to the Genie documentation, which uh, we'll share the uh, URL for this at the end of the session, uh, but the Genie documentation, and if I go into user guide, we have the ro robot framework guide here. And in the robot framework guide, it will show you what all the robot keywords are. And uh, this is that page that I pulled up earlier. So really from here, we can do lots of learns, passes, profile the system, run triggers and verifications. So that's kind of doing some disruptive testing of the network. And we can do uh, count verifications. So, so forth. So it's a, it's a very powerful tool to kind of semi-automate your verification of a network. So now we've looked at Genie CLI, we've looked at Robot briefly, and in the last 15 minutes, uh, I'm going to look at uh, how we can leverage Python. So Python provides us, as you as you'll know, provides us with additional logic so we can really kind of supercharge our testing. What I'm going to show you first off is what how we can do what we've done both with robot and with CLI in Python. Now in Genie there's a there's a neat little command. Um, so if I go into Genie help and if we see here it's Genie Shell. Now, if I invoke Genie Shell, Genie Shell will create a Python shell for me. It will load the correct Genie libraries and it will reload the testbed file for me. So it kind of initializes my Python environment, so uh, my, my interactive Python environment. If I was writing a script, and I'll show you a script later, you'd actually do you'd actually put those uh, imports and loading of that testbed in manually. One thing I do need to do whilst using Python is to clean up my shell. So I'm going to get rid of those uh, Unicon variables. And then I'm going to use Genie Shell. Uh, I'll tell it what a testbed file is. In this case, it's a, a slightly different testbed file. And it's not going to be there because I'm in the wrong directory. There we go. So. Genie shell testbed file mock test dot yaml. Let's 
So I've got IPython installed in my virtual environment. If you have IPython installed, when it brings up the interactive uh, shell, it will all, always go into IPython. The reason I'm using IPython here, I find it easier to actually demonstrate what's happening with Python. So uh, in normal circumstances, I, I don't really use IPython that much. Um, so what we've done is, as we can see here, we've loaded in the Genie library. We've also loaded in the test bed. So that test bed is an object with quite a few different attributes. Uh, and if I press tab here, I can see that I've got attributes and methods for this testbed object. One of those attributes is devices. And if I tab here, we can see that I've got some devices. And in fact, I've only got one device in this particular testbed and it's called XE. Now, what I want to do is create an object from that uh, from that particular object. So I'm going to call it UUT and I'm going to call it testbed.devices.exe. Now UUT now has some uh, methods and attributes. One of those, which we're going to be using frequently in our tests, is connect. So before we can do anything with a device within Python, we have to connect to the device in the first instance. So I do a uutt.connect, and it's going to go off and connect to that device. And it sets up the environment for me to send additional commands onto this XE device. What I'm also going to do is, I always like to do this, is just put in some pretty print because we might be looking at some JSON or some dictionaries, who knows. Now, what, um, what I want to do now is I want to create a object that has all my operational state and my configuration state for interfaces on this XE device. So to do that, I'm going to call this uh, object interface and I've got my UUT. UUT has a learn method and I'm going to say learn interface. Now what it's going to do, it's going to take the interface model that's inherent within Genie and it's going to go off and learn about that from the device and populate it within my interface object. There we go. Does it pretty quick because uh, I'm connected to a recorded device. If I type interface now, we can see that's an object, and that object has an attribute called info. And this is where we save all our state. And there it is, and it's all in nice uh, structured data. And if I do type interface info. I can see that's actually a dictionary. Now, it's a dictionary that's been made by the uh, GDOps base maker. But it's a dictionary. So if it's a dictionary, I can get keys. Yeah, so print, uh, right, let's do a pretty print, pretty print interface dot info and gigabit ethernet two. And let's go for its physical address. Uh, right, there we go. So that's the physical address of Gigabit Ethernet 2 on XE. So now, a great way of retrieving data and passing it, yeah. Now there is another way of doing this. This is just, um, this has just been released recently by uh, Simming and his team to do the UUT Learn. Makes life so much simple, simpler. In the past, you had to reference the uh, the library itself. So sometimes what you'll see if you start searching around uh, for examples of PyATS or, or, or Genie code, Genie Python code, you may see something like this: Genie.libs ops .interface .ios .xe 
by interface import interface. So what in fact I'm doing there is I'm importing the interface class from this particular library. Now remembering where all those libraries are can be a bit of a fag. Um, so Simming and the team have made life easier by just doing the uut.learn and life is wonderful. Now, <clears throat> what I'm going to do is show you how we can mimic what we did with Genie CLI uh, and also with Robot. So I'm going to create a new object. I'm going to call it Interface Before. And uut.learn interface. So I have that object and I'm now going to load up, uh, I'm going to load up a new testbed file because my network has changed once again. So this is the commands you would use if you was not using GD shell, you was just in the interactive shell from the start or you was using uh, or you was creating a script. So I'm going to call this mock disaster dot yaml and ut equals testbed dot devices dot exe and I'm going to connect again to my network. And now I'm going to create another object which I'm going to call interface after and that's uut.learn and I'm going to learn the interface again. Now I have, in fact, I have three objects. I've got interface, interface after and interface before. What I want to do is have a look at the difference between these. So I want to explore the different difference in state between the two networks. And to do this, I use the diff method. So I'm going to create uh, an object called diff, uh, interface after, and it has a method called diff. And I want to diff with what we had before. Now if I print diff, there we go, we can see what the differences are. Now one of the beauties of, uh, of Genie CLI and Robot is that, that when we did diffs, things that we expect to change, they ignored. So octets, we, we expect them to change. Yeah, so they're kind of ignored when we do Genie CLI. Uh, when we do Python, we're just seeing the changes for everything. So we can in fact, excuse me, we can in fact get rid of that noise. And so to speed things up a little, because my typing is taking a while, I'm going to copy this particular statement. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to recreate the interface after object. And I'm saying learn the interface, but only learn these attributes. So the interface, the interface object has uh, has attributes in info and it has a number of keys. The first key, as you're aware, is the uh, interface name, gigabit, ethernet, one, two, three, four, so on and so forth. So I'm putting a wildcard here to capture all the interfaces and then I just want the operational status. So done that. Then I'm going to enter my good network again. And I'm going to do the same here, but I'm just I'm just passing my operational status, and there we have it. So now, if I do a diff between the two, and print diff. There we have it. So we got rid of all those counters and we can see nice and clearly that the operational status of Gigabit Ethernet 2 has changed from down to up. And so we can't do that with Python, but what we can do is we can add additional logic 
within a Python script to test out our network. So I've shown you some kind of simple things, but the, by taking all the different models we've got to validate our network and to check for different states, we can make a really powerful testing, uh, uh, a testing script. There's a couple of other things I just really want to show quickly. One is, um, is on my UUT, I have a method called execute. So with execute, I can execute a command. Uh, and in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this version. Version equals UUT to execute show version. So we've sent off a show version command to that router. It's come back with this detail. And if we look here, uh, it's, a, it's a, a lovely string of data that's come back and populated into that version object. Um, but I don't like playing around with, don't really like playing around with strings. So again, Simming showed you earlier all the parsers we have within Genie. We can leverage the parser here. So there is a parser for show version. And I can use the pass method of the UUT object and return that. And now if I type version, it's nicely formatted structured data. So, <clears throat> so I've really shown you crawl, run, oh, sorry, crawl, walk, run. So crawl with Genie CLI, walk with robot, do some testing with robot, run, starting use some Python. Now I'm going to, before we wrap up, I'm just going to quickly go to um, Usain Bolt level and I'm going to do a bit of a sprint. So this is a this is a script courtesy of uh, one of our colleagues, um, Kevin Corbin. And what we're doing here is we've created a script using the AE test framework. Uh, Simming mentioned before that AE test is something where we, we, we do the sort of common things uh, uh, for, that we do for all tests, and then we use the Genie libraries on top. So in order to use AE test, there's a particular method of using it. We have to um, we have to import the AE test library. Uh, we have to import Genie again. Uh, we have something called uh, a common setup section. So the common setup section, all this is doing is setting up our test bed and retrieving devices, what the devices are in the test bed. Uh, then we go into our test case section. Uh, each test case, we use a decorator. We call it AE test, and we get the test section to do something. Now this may look overwhelming, but what we're basically doing in this script is just what I did when I was showing you Genie CLI with Genie Robot and also with, uh, with, with the interactive Python. There's a bit more Python in here to make it a little prettier. There's also, um, uh, there's also some additional reporting. But what we're doing is we're just going and gathering BGP information. We're checking what the state of that BGP information is and then reporting back. So we're learning the BGP and reporting it back. Because we're using AE test, we get some nice reporting as well. So, uh, and then after the test, we have what we call our common cleanup section. So this is to clean up the test bed environment, disconnect everything and make sure your Python's all nice and uh, clean once you leave it. So in order to run something like this, uh, we can use something. We can use the EasyPy runtime, um, which is probably EasyPy in AETS test is something we will cover in a future session. We can do HTML, HTML logs, my HTML, uh, no archive, testbed file. So in fact, that 
has failed. So you had a typo in your um, flag. Yeah. So where's the type? All oh, right. Um, yeah, got it. Thanks, Hank. So basically, connecting the devices now, learning the BGP, checking the BGP status. What we're looking for is whether neighbors are established. Uh, we get some ta task results here. Um, and uh, we can see that our tests here have passed for, um, for checking uh, BGP neighbor state. And similar to before, if I've got uh, in my HTML, I've got a task log. Uh, open my HTML task log. And there we have it. This is the BGP check job, and we can interrogate what happened while we was doing this check. So that's the end of the demo. We're right at the top of the hour, uh, kind of a minute over. So I'd just like to summarize and, uh, and hand back to Hank. Um, so I hope both myself and Simming have, these, uh, have, have um, demonstrated that you know, Pyatt's and Genie is a really powerful tool that provides an ecosystem for uh, network engineers to really test their network you know, and to embrace DevOps and valid validation. Uh, the platform is agnostic. I know I've shown you just uh, XR, XE, and NXOS, uh, but it can be used against other devices. Uh, you can create your own passes. Uh, if people are coming to Cisco Live, there's a couple of DevNet sessions there. I'm running one where I actually show you how to create uh, your own passes and an ops model. Uh, and it really is suitable for uh, all network engineers with a variety of program abilities. I mean, it's so powerful with just Genie CLI, but you know, it goes into SuperDrive once we get into Python. So um, I hope giving you a, so, you know, sort of a, a very quick view of what we can do with PyATS and Genie is going to sort of instill you with some um, drive to go out there and use this particular uh, framework. The resource list, so the Pyatt's Genie landing page, everything I've shown, everything um, that uh, uh, Simming has shown can be got from that particular landing page. You can go to the documentation links here. Also, the content that I ran through is on GitHub. You can go down there and uh, download or clone that GitHub repository. If you do clone that GitHub repository, you can use those recorded environments. So everything I've shown you here is replayable. So you don't need to have access to any NXOS or XR devices. You can replay everything I've, uh, I've demonstrated. And with that, I hand back to you, Frank, Hank, uh, and thanks a lot. Great, thanks so much, Simon, I appreciate it. So we went through a ton of really good content here, and hopefully everybody's starting to get a grasp of what the power of PyATS and Genie offer us as network engineers around network verification and validation. And we'll give you a code exchange challenge. Take some of the pieces you learned today, and, and I would say start with some of the Genie CLI. It's a really easy way to get going with PyATS and Genie, and write some verifications. We've got some examples here around reachability or HSRP, but really see how powerful and easy it is to get started on that. And then as you're continuing your Net DevOps journey, don't forget about all of the great resources that we have up on DevNet around Net DevOps. We've got all of the, the blogs, the videos, the different courses that are out there. We're constantly adding more material in addition to the upcoming season, uh, rest of the season here on Net DevOps Live. So be sure to join us next week for our video session where we'll dive continue our season two episodes as it goes through. Thanks everybody for joining us today and we will talk to you soon. Thanks.